Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. The title of the message is, How often are you thinking about heaven? How often are you thinking about heaven? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Brother Nathan, can you pray for the message? Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. And thank you for your word. And thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Without him, there is no meaning in life. And I've seen what this world has to offer. It's nothing but grief, pain, and despair. But then I have it. I'm so thankful for Christ, who is our hope. And I'm excited one day that when I see you, whether it be by death or by the rapture, hopefully, Father, I would hope that it's the rapture. But even death, I fear no death. And the only thing that's worth living is for you. Nothing else in this world matters. Father, we love you, Lord. I pray that Pastor Jay would just rebuke us, tell us our sins, and not be ashamed, and also exhort us to keep on following after you. Father, please bless this message. Help us to have an open heart, open ears, and open our eyes. And not let us harden our hearts so that we can listen to what you would have to say and truly have repentance and not what this world calls repentance. Father, thank you for everything you've given us, Lord. I pray all this in Christ Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 So heaven is a topic that's been talked about a lot. You know, as a Bible-believing, you know, preachers, you preach about, you know, sin, hell, a lot. I mean, our Lord Jesus Christ preached about hell a lot more than heaven. However, heaven is something that is lacking in you know, people's mind many times because you're so inundated with so many of the things going on in your life, you tend to forget you are only a stranger and pilgrim on this earth. Do you hear that? You're a stranger and a pilgrim. This earth is not your home. Your home is in heaven. When you are so bogged down and comfortable in this so-called earthly home, then I could guarantee that your affection is not set on things above. Instead, your affection is set on things below. How many times did you think about heaven today? How many times did you think about heaven in the past week? I could tell you this, people who's going through the hardships tend to think about heaven a little bit more. People who tend to go through good things and good times, they don't really think about heaven that much. When it comes to heaven, is it real to you? Would you rather have your riches here on earth or would you have your riches in heaven? Would you rather be happy down here, or would you rather be, you know, eternally joyful in heaven? When did you think about heaven as if, you know, it's like, you know, when Apostle Paul talks about when he actually went to third heaven and came back, he just can't go back, you know? Literally, he wants to go back to heaven. When was last time you had that desire to be in heaven? You know, I'm not talking about committing suicide either, right? You know, people twist things like, oh, yeah, that means that, you know, I'm just going to kill myself and go to, you know, heaven. No. I mean, when was the desire of you constantly? You know, you know this earth, I'm just passing through, but I want to be in heaven. I want the Lord to come back. I mean, literally, when you're thinking about rapture, you're thinking about heaven, aren't you? you know, what's the greatest and best thing about heaven? That's where our Savior and Lord is, right? I mean, there's mansion for you as well. You know, they're, you know, on a golden street. I mean, everything's going to be good up there. However, number one thing is that you'll see and you'll be with your Lord and Savior forever. However, if you're not thinking about heaven, that means that you're not really thinking about, you know, Jesus Christ either. You're full of all these worldly things. That's why you don't have that 
godly contentment, right? You heard of it, right? In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, you know? Godly contentment only comes when you're content with just having Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and nothing else. Do you know why you're not content? Because you're not satisfied. You're not happy with what you have currently. Whether you are a millionaire or whether you are a penny pincher, when you're, you're not happy with what you have right now, that means you're not content. That means you're desiring more and more. Only thing that you need to desire more and more is the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to know more about him more and more. How often did you think about Lord Jesus Christ during the past week? This is already in the last day of February. How many days have you thought about Lord Jesus Christ? The reason you don't think about heaven is because you don't think about Lord Jesus Christ. It's simple as that. You know, we have a lot of stories. When someone desires to see someone because they love them, you think about them constantly, right? When people are in a long distance you know, relationship, they can't wait for the day to meet, especially if they used to meet, but one had to move away for whatever reason. And if they still love each other, they can't wait to see each other. You say you love Jesus Christ, but does your thoughts, does your life show that you really want to see him? If you don't even talk to him on a daily basis, how can you say you love Jesus Christ? How can you say, you know, I think about heaven, right? Too many times, too many days go by as a Christian where you think more about worldly things than godly things. You think more about, you know, things on earth instead of heavenly things. When you think about these earthly things constantly, it's only going to give you headache. What's out there? There's pandemic, there's politics, right? There's finances that you have to worry about. You know, there's job that you have to worry about. You know, there's relationship part that you have to worry about. I mean, only thing you could think about is, how can I prevent it from going wrong, right? Because you have mouths to feed, right? You have things to do, you have places to go. You have colleges to apply for. Then, when you are constantly only thinking about those things, literally, you're going to go crazy. And you're going to be depressed. And you feel like there's no hope. That's why one of the saddest things to see is a so-called, say, Bible-believing Christians living a very pitiful, sad, you know, life. As a saved Christian, especially Bible-believing Christians who has a perfect Word of God, you should be joyful all the time. You know, your face might not show it because some of you guys are stoic, because some of you guys don't like to share your feelings per se, you know, because you're a tough guy or tough gal, right? However, your heart should show it. However, your heart should be, you know what? Only thing I want to really think about is going to heaven. I'm not saying that you don't do anything either. You know, you do have to have a balanced Christian life. You have to work hard. You have to be a good example to worldly people. But however, as you work your best, like Bible says, you know, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Do you do that all the time? Whatever you do, do you do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men? Even when you are throwing trash away, right? You're doing your chores, young people or old people, right? When your wife tells you to throw trash away, right? When your mommy tells you to throw trash away, even those little things, do you suddenly, first thought comes to your heart is, man, I don't wanna do it, you know? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it day after tomorrow. I'll do it when there's more trash that, you know, picks up, you know, when it's full. Or do you just do it right away? I guarantee you, at least for the first time, if you were to meet Lord Jesus Christ, and he says, you know, Richard, do this. You got to do it right away. Like, Timothy, do this. 
You gotta do it right away without any hesitation. If trash can is empty, there's only one trash in the trash can. If Lord says to throw it away, you gotta do it right away. You're not gonna be like, oh, Lord, we have to wait until this gets to full, right? You know, that's the better way, practical way to do it. No, you're just gonna do it. Why? Because it just came out of Lord's mouth, right? Then, if you're gonna act like that, when you say, when you see him face to face, just like the hymn that we sing, why don't you do it right now? Why don't you think about the day when you're actually going to see him? Why don't you act, act like it right now? That's why you do not have joy in your Christian life. That's why you have too many problems. That's why you have too many issues. That's why you're just always bogged down. That's why you're you never have peace. You know, there are many preachings about it, right, for various reasons. But main reason is you don't think about heaven. I mean, you don't think about where you're going. All you're thinking about where you're going right in front of you. Like 30 miles, 50 miles, however you know, far your school or work is. That's all you think about. You don't think about that eternity. If you don't think about it, then how do you think you're going to be blessed by it? If you don't meditate on the Word of God, you're not going to be blessed by it, right? But if you, don't, if you don't think about heaven, if you don't think about Lord Jesus Christ, seeing Him face to face, who saved you from hell, shedding His precious blood, how are you going to have joy in your life? You know, if someone died for you in a, in a real life, you're going to think about that person. Why? Because you have life right now because of that person. If you had to die because of a crime that you committed, but someone died in your place, say it was your mom, she died in your place, and then she was executed for your sake so that you could live longer, you could live a new day every day, then you're going to reminisce, you're going to think about, and you're going to thank your mom every single day when you wake up. Maybe even more, because that was someone who loved you and who died for you, right? You were saved from eternal lake of fire. Think about that. You know, sometimes our small, tiny brain can comprehend those things. You and I were supposed to burn an eternal lake of fire forever. Not just one day, two day, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, million years, trillion years, you and I were supposed to burn forever and ever and ever. Can you imagine? But because of Lord Jesus Christ, you and I don't have to burn there. Not even for a single day, not even for a single minute, not even for a single second, millisecond, milli, milli, millisecond. How can you not be thinking about him each day? How can you not? However, because of your flesh, you don't. Because of your selfish ways, because of your old nature, because you just don't care, because you're backslidden, because there are many reasons, because of the world, because of the devil. But there are no excuses. Are you going to, in the judgment seat of Christ, are you going to be like, Lord, you know, I had too many things going on in my life, so you know, I couldn't really think about you or doing your work, you know. And then Lord's going to, you know, share his scars. Lord's going to, you know, play the tape. Lord's going to, like, I shed all my blood for you. I died on the cross for you. You think you have any kind of excuse? None, not at all. And that's why Apostle Paul said, you know, it's a terrible judgment. It's going to be scary. Think about what you and I will be facing at the judgment seat of Christ. What you have done for Lord after you got saved. I mean, everything. I know some of you guys have been saved for a while. Some of you are newer Christians. Think about every day, every second, Every hour, you'll be judged what you have done for Lord Jesus Christ after you got saved. 
That's why it is very important that you, know, you take care of your sin problems on a daily basis. You know, if you do not confess your sins and get right on a daily basis, then it's going to be showing at the judgment seat of Christ. That's why you have to look at future. You got to look at eternity. Too many times, you and I only look at what's right in front of us. I mean, we don't really think about our eternity and the future that's coming our way. That's why all you think about is, well, what am I going to eat tonight, right? How am I going to do at school tomorrow? You know? I mean, what's my parents going to give me? Uh, what's going to be on TV? Uh, what music should I listen to? So all these needless things, when it's compared to eternity, you need to have a balanced Christian life, right? And when I mean balanced, Lord Jesus Christ should be number one all the time. Heaven should be on your mind all the time. And when you think about heaven, then you're also going to think about hell. Because heaven is eternal joy. You'll be with your Lord and Savior forever. But hell, eternal lake of fire. And you're going you're gonna to think about those people who's in your life, who's not saved, who will spend eternity burning in hell, where you won't share the joy in heaven forever. Instead, you'll see them sent down to hell for eternity in the great white throne judgment. See, it goes both ways. The reason you have no love for the lost souls out there, the reason you haven't passed out tracks in so many days, the reason you haven't witnessed to anybody when God gave you opportunity to witness, because you don't think about heaven. When you don't think about heaven, you're not going to talk about it. When I'm not thinking about certain things, I'm not going to talk about it, right? If I'm thinking about, say, swimming, and I think about it constantly because it's good for you, you know, it's, uh, it's good for your health, right? And then when we start talking about, you know, being healthy, good exercise, I'm going to bring that up because I've been thinking about it. If you are thinking about, say, you know, what else? Uh, plumbing, right? For a change. You know, toilet's getting clogged, right? First chance you see Nathan, let's talk about plumbing. Right? Because it has been on your mind. Or it's whether at work, right? You're thinking about this presentation and project, and then you're going to talk about it with your coworkers or your boss or whoever it is. When you are thinking about Lord Jesus Christ, when you're thinking about heaven, and you're thinking about hell along with it, you're going to talk about it whenever there's chance, whenever there's opportunity. However, when was the last time you talked to anyone about heaven? When was the last time you talked to anyone about Lord Jesus Christ? When was the last time you passed out a track to anybody? I think you and I definitely have no excuse at all. You know, our church has so many different type of tracks in the back that you could take home and then you could just pass them out. We have we have English, we have Spanish, we have Korean, we have Vietnamese, Chinese. I mean, you name it, you know. Anybody you want to pass out to, we have it in those language here. And if you want to pass out in Russian, I'm pretty sure we could find a Russian track somewhere in the back. So definitely there's no excuse. The reason you don't do it, just look at yourself. Check where your heart is. Is my heart on things above? Did I set it on things above on a daily basis? Or is that all down here? When you live life like that, that's not a happy Christian life. To me, that's wasteful life. As I mentioned, I mean, time goes by so fast. How much time have you wasted this year, last year, throughout all these years because you haven't thought about heaven enough. I mean, some days I'm like, okay, what did I really do today? Worked, right? Ate, and did the normal things. But 
Did I get closer to Lord Jesus Christ today? Is heaven more real to me today than yesterday? No, Dwight L. Moody, right? everyone knows Dwight L. Moody, or if most of you, his favorite subject to preach was heaven. And each time he said, we're nearer to heaven today than we ever have been before in our lives. He was excited. I mean, he really couldn't wait to go to heaven. Well, we'll see, you know, Dwight L. Moody, we'll see him in heaven, right? And he's going to probably tell you the same thing. You know, throughout my ministry, you know, that kept me going because I know and I knew each day passes by, I'm near to heaven, whether it's rapture or whether you know, I pass away and go to heaven. I don't know about you. I don't know what your testimony is going to be. As each day passes by, do you ever tell yourself, like, man, I'm more near today than yesterday to heaven. I'm more near than ever to heaven. Then, if you don't think like that, how do you think it's going to affect your rest of your life? If, say, if you're building Lego, right? Everybody, when you're little, I was little, I love Lego. You build Lego. You're building a, say, you know, a firehouse. If foundation is wrong, what happens? It doesn't look that good. Or it might just, you know, break it. When your priority of each day doesn't start with heaven, hell, Lord Jesus Christ, then what happens? The rest of the day, think about it as a lost day. Right? And Lord bought you with a price. You're his, and you're wasting his time. You know, last thing, you know, say when we go to work as Christians or even just regular person, you don't want to be stealing company time, as they say, right? When company gave you eight hours to work, you know, you want to work those hours the best way you can, right? Every day if you get assigned to do a project, you want to do it. You don't want to be, you know, sleeping or playing video game or don't do anything. But it's just expected, right? And if you don't produce any result, then, you know, literally you didn't do anything during the times that you were paid for. You do that for your own work because you feel obligated or because you feel like you need to do it. But when it comes to things of God, when it comes to what the Lord has done for you, when it comes to heaven, you don't think about it. You become so wasteful. You really, really think that at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord's going to give you a, like a you know, golden star, a you know, job well done sticker to you. I mean, how many of you guys think that you're going to receive it? Right? It's a process. It's an ongoing process where you and I have to strive to get better on a daily basis. And it's a good reminder, right? As I preach, I mean, I'm getting preached on. How often have I thought about heaven lately? Right? I mean, you pass our tracks, okay. Right? You, do, you say you, you have love for the souls out there, right? But is it because you do it because of obligation or because of your, your robotic or because you have a you know, place amongst you know, you know, church members? Or do you do it because you're thinking about heaven? You're thinking about hell because of Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done for all these lost souls out there. And it's great to see you know, and Caleb and Yuki and you know, Sister Amber, you know, working on gospel, right? You know, that's, that's one of the highest calling, to be able to, you know, spread the gospel, right? Are they doing it because they speak Mandarin, because they speak Japanese, because they speak Korean? No, they do it because they have love for the lost souls out there, because there's heaven waiting at the end of the tunnel, and we're getting super close to the end of the tunnel. Then, do you want to be blindsided 
when you're at the end of the tunnel because you weren't expecting it, because you weren't ready. You know, when, when you're in a dark place and you suddenly turn on the light, you become blurry-eyed, right? You, you can't really see. That's like your spiritual state right now. Since you haven't really thought about Lord Jesus Christ, you haven't been really thinking about heaven, you're just walking down, walking down the dark spiritual path when it is time to turn on the light, you get so blinded. You don't know what to do. You just feel shameful because you haven't been expecting it. However, for those of you who get right with the Lord and start walking in light, you don't need the light turned to, I mean light to turn on because you're already in that light. You're in Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, He's the light of the world. And it's shining through you. But sadly, what would be the percentage in this room or people who's listening? Right? How many of you guys are actually shining that light in your life? And we can't give excuse that all oh, we're you know in a pandemic, so we don't we can't do it. No, you have more opportunity. Because people are staying at home more, you know, people are so trapped. You know, they love to say something, right? And you could always start a conversation. It was like, I guess it's like a corny story. And I was getting some coffee at Starbucks the other day, and I had a tract. It's called The Choice. Everybody seen The Choice, right? So I was thinking about it, okay. What would be the best way to give to a person so that they won't reject it? You know, sometimes you just give it, okay, here's something for you to read, right? So I said, okay, do you like making choices? I think she was, I think, you know, caught off guard, right? <laughs> okay, I can't really say no to this guy anymore. <laughs> like, I like making choices, you know. She said, it. okay, here's a choice that you could make, you know. And then that's it. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to use that line all the time. It depends on people, right? But when you are thinking about other people's souls, especially when you're thinking about heaven, you're thinking about hell, that's constantly what you think about on a daily basis. How can I get closer to Lord Jesus Christ? How can I be a better witness to others so that they could go to heaven instead of burning in hell forever? How? Can I not waste Lord's time? How can I take you know, advantage of all the opportunities that Lord has given me and will give me on a daily basis? Am I going to become one of those you know, Christians who wasted all of the hours, all of the years, and just be regretful during the judgment? Or am I going to be one of those few Christians who actually really appreciated what the Lord did for me and who actually thought about heaven just like Dwaryl Moody all the time and who thought that heaven was more, much more near than ever before and I want others to go to heaven together with me and it's so easy thing to do and that's my goal in life. Or are you going to be someone always hinged in the middle? Like lukewarm Christian, right? Like, you know, Laodicean church, you wanna spit them out? You know, I know that after a great day of exercise, best thing is like a cold drink. You know? And you're so thirsty. Imagine someone gives you like a really lukewarm drink. You kinda wanna spit it out. It doesn't taste good at all. But, that's how you and I act many days. We're just so lukewarm. We're like, kind of gonna become like kind of hot or cold, but you're like just in the middle. It's very, very distasteful. You know, when you go to a restaurant, you either ask, a lot of times you ask for a hot or cold, you know, drink. If weather is super cold, right, you want like some hot drink. Weather too super hot, you ask for a cold drink. I haven't, you know, not many people say, give me a lukewarm water, right? 
Like it doesn't taste good. It might be good for your health, for whatever reasons, right? But what kind of Christian are you today? Well, are you a lukewarm Christian? Are you a hot Christian? Are you a cold Christian? You have to be something, right? If you stay at the lukewarm stage, then just to be sure that you, I guarantee, don't care about heaven, really don't think about hell, witnessing isn't the number one priority in your life, you're just bogged down by things of the world, and you die if Lord tarries by things of the world, and you be that pitiful Christian who will regret. Would you want to be that Christian? Like, oh man, why does he keep on telling me? You know, why am I listening to this? You know, that, you know, I haven't really been thinking about heaven often. I haven't really been a good Christian. You know, I haven't really been thinking about lost souls. You know, I haven't really been thinking about hell. Right? Why does he keep on thinking about that? You know why? Because you haven't. That's why. And you have two choices. You know, just like I asked the lady, you like making choices? Everybody likes making choices. You could listen to message. You could change for the better. Like Brother Nathan prayed, you want to get better, you want to change, you want to be pricked, and you want to have conviction, and you want to become a better Christian. You want to get closer to the Lord. You want to think about heaven more. Or you could just reject it. I cannot force you. Lord's not going to force you. Your mommy, daddy, and friends not going to force you. At the end of the day, it's up to you to make that choice. Do I think about heaven enough? Do I think about Lord Jesus Christ enough? Do I think about hell enough? Do I think about lost souls enough? It will change who you are as a Christian forever. You're going to start looking up instead of always looking down. Let's pray. Pastor Shrive, would you close us in prayer? Thank you, everyone.